Counter Spy is the rare sort of game that works surprisingly well despite having a few chinks in the armor. When I originally reviewed it on the PS Vita, I was positively blown away at the snappy controls, great visuals, and surprisingly fun sneaking and shooting. Preventing the nuclear annihilation of the moon has never been this fun. Then... I played the PS3 version. You see, Counter Spy is kind of like if Austin Powers, XCOM, Rocket Birds, Hard Boiled, Metal Gear Solid, and Archer all had a baby. Your mission, if you choose to accept it, which is pretty easy since it's free with PlayStation Plus as of this recording, is to prevent the USSR and the United States from destroying the moon. It's a nuclear space race as ridiculous as it sounds and the humor pervades all the game's subtle writing quirks. At its core, Counter Spy is a light-hearted response to 2009's Shadow Complex. The game primarily plays out like a 2.5D platformer with the ability to go into cover and take on a third-person shooter perspective. Despite both genres rarely meshing that well in the past despite several attempts, Counter Spy makes it feel natural. The camera shift in cover gives you just the right view to line up headshots. Even with the Vita's twitchy sticks, it's easy to aim, and it's just as easy on the PlayStation 3. The XCOM influence is clear from the get-go. You have to choose from different missions with varying rewards and difficulties, all while trying to keep either nation from reaching DEFCON 1. Every time you die during a mission, the DEFCON goes one step closer to launch, so getting out alive is generally more important than being a perfect ninja. This is because Counter Spy understands how to actually make choice, and consequences from your choices matter. Going loud can complicate things, but if you have the skills, you can clear out an entire room before an alarm goes off. However, if you can be the best stealth operative under Counter's command, you are rewarded for it. But you can also clean up your mistakes with a snappy trigger finger if something goes awry. The game emphasizes exploring its randomly generated levels thoroughly, but how far you dig into the whole game will vary. I was able to clear the game in about 7 hours, but a scoreboard system and various post-game unlockables that carry across playthroughs keep you coming back. There are also three different difficulty settings that change enemy compositions and level layouts. Different DEFCONs also change the current mission layouts and what enemy types are spawned in the level. However, after a single playthrough, the content starts to get repetitious. There's enough to make it through a single playthrough, don't get me wrong. For 7 to 8 hours, they're constantly rolling out new ideas, new enemy types, new level types. It all comes together beautifully. But when you're playing through again, the levels become way more predictable. And you start to really be able to tell what's going to be coming next. It's sort of like, okay, I know this room, I know that room, I know what enemies are going to be in what places. They might have a rocket launcher, they might have a submachine gun, but they're still going to be spawning in the exact same places. The game does its best to try to vary things up, but it can only do so much. Also, you're probably wondering, how does the PS3 mess this up? Well, weirdly long loading times for levels, misbehaving AI, and more all cause a surprising amount of annoyance. Nothing truly breaks the game, but I don't seem to remember the Vita failing over three times to save my file to the cloud. That said, regardless of the platform you play it on, praise needs to be given to the game's art style and sound design. Every music track sounds like classic James Bond, and the visual aesthetic makes it look like you are walking through an actual living propaganda poster. Console versions of the game even bend the camera view to make it look like an old TV screen. It's fantastic, it's just brilliantly done, and the extra bits of humor written into the background are hilarious. And I have to admit, even the skyboxes look good. It's just that good looking and sounding. It is just a beautiful, beautiful game with some really smart brains underneath. Counter Spy is the type of game that should have been on the Vita to start with. This should have been a Vita launch title but it came way too late into that platform's life cycle. If you have a system that can run it, then without reservation, buy this, even if you have to suffer through a few glitches and weirdnesses on the PS3. Or just download it as you have PS Plus, because pretty much anyone who has a PS4 has PlayStation Plus, and it's available on there as well.
an 8 out of 10. Shaken, not stirred.